Hello, I'm Dr. Abdullah Albiati. I've been asked to examine your neck today, if that's all right. Yeah. Can I just check your name and date of birth? Hannah Perlman, the 11th of January, 91. Are you in any pain at the moment? No. Are you having any difficulty breathing or swallowing? No. Great. Can I get you to cross your arms across your chest and to stand up for me and take a few steps into the centre of the room? Right, sit down. Just gel my hands and we'll have a look at your neck now. Just place your hands out in front of you. If you keep them there for a moment. Could you turn them over, please? And if you rest your arms. Ideally, I would check the patient's blood pressure at this point. Could you swallow, please? And if you could stick your tongue out and back in and protrude your tongue one more time and back in. Could you take a sip of water and hold this in your mouth? And swallow. We'll do that again, but this time I'll be stood behind you holding your neck. Could you take another sip of water, holding it in your mouth? And if you swallow. Let me know if I'm pushing down your neck too tight. Just feel the lymph nodes in your neck. Could I get you to shrug your shoulders and down? And if you turn your head towards the right, and if you turn your head towards the left. Excellent. I'll take that away from you. Can I get you to follow my finger, keeping your head still? Any double vision there at all? No. Excellent. If you follow my finger again, keeping your head still. Just one more time. Very good. I'm just going to tap down on your chest. I'll have a listen to the blood vessels around your neck as well. That's fine. Would it be all right to see your shins as well, please? Thank you very much. That completes the examination. All right, so let's review the neck examination. It's most likely your patient will be sat on a chair and against a wall. This is going to obstruct you from doing your inspection 360 degrees around the patient's neck. We can use this to our advantage. If you ask the patient to cross their arms across their chest and to stand without using their arms, we've now tested for proximal myopathy, which is seen within hypothyroidism. Take a few steps into the middle of the room and have a seat. Now, Hannah is appropriately dressed for this examination. She has her neck exposed and her hair is put up. It's also important to note what kind of clothing the patient is wearing. If it's a very hot day and they're wearing jumpers and coats, this is a sign of hypothyroidism. And if the patient is quite exposed and it's a very cold day, this may be a sign of hypothyroidism. Next is the inspection. It's important to gauge that there's no mass, lump, swelling or skin changes around the neck. You need to have a view of the neck all the way around. Once you've noted that there's no abnormalities, 
there's good symmetry and no scarring, it's important to look at the face as well. You're trying to identify whether the outer third of the eyebrows are missing or not. This again is a sign of hypothyroidism. Just put your hands out in front of you please. Here we're testing for tremor. This would be a sign of hypothyroidism. Keeping the patient's hands out, we can now look for thyroacropathy, which looks like clubbing and is seen in thyroid diseases. You can also test for capillary refill time at this point and get a feel for the patient's warmth. Turn your hands over, please. You're checking for palmar erythema and you're checking for any sweating. From here, you can move on check the pulse. Now, when checking the pulse at the wrist, the radial pulse, you are noting the rate and the rhythm. So the rate has to be between 60 and 100 beats per minute, and the rhythm should ideally be sinus rhythm. If it's an irregular pulse, there's a chance this is atrial fibrillation, which is seen in hypothyroidism. You should rest your arms down. We then also check the patient's blood pressure. We return to inspection, ask the patient to swallow, and ask them to protrude their tongue forwards and back in. If there's any mass movement with the swallowing, this is suggestive of a thyroid mass. If there's any movement with the patient protruding the tongue, this is a sign of a thyroglossal cyst. So it's important at this point that we're going to ask the patient to swallow a glass of water. It's important that your instructions are correct and accurate, as you want the patient to take a sip of water, but to retain this in their mouth before swallowing and when you're ready to inspect. Just take a sip of water, but not swallow, please. You can swallow now. Excellent. You now do the same from behind, but this time palpating the thyroid. Place your hands gently over the patient's neck. Just take another sip of water and not swallow yet. Swallow now, please. You're looking to feel if there's a mass moving with the swallowing. At this point, you're now palpating the thyroid gland. Using your left hand, gently push the thyroid gland towards the right and palpate with the right fingers. Likewise, with the right hand, push towards the left and palpate with the left hand. Here you're trying to feel if there's any nodules of the thyroid or whether the thyroid as a whole is swollen. From the back of the neck, you can now easily access the lymph nodes. So you're starting off with submandibular, anterior cervical chain, posterior cervical chain, preauricular, postauricular, occipital, and the supraclavicular, infraclavicular lymph nodes. Once you're stood behind the patient, it's important to also examine the neck muscles. These are innervated by the accessory nerve, and you're checking the trapezius muscle at this point as well. Place your hands on the patient's shoulders and ask them to shrug up, and now gently apply pressure and see that they maintain the shoulder Shrugging. Should we relax now? If you get the patient to turn their head towards your hand and push against your hand, you are now palpating the opposite trapezius muscle and towards the other side. Thank you. So the patient has normal muscle tone and the accessory nerve appears to be intact. We move on to examine the eyes. You're checking if the patient has any double vision or any lid lag, as this can be a sign of thyroid disease. It's also important to note whether the patient has any exophthalmus or ptosis. Just keep your head still and follow my finger, please. Let me know if there's any double vision. When doing this examination, it's important to be realistic. There's no point in dragging your finger out all the way to the extremes. You can look at the patient's face and you can tell that their eyes are already at the extremes. Now we move on to lid lag, and this you can see in any textbook or online is where the eyelid does not follow the movement of the eyes, and it's called a lid lag. You're making an oval shape with your fingers, and you have to do this at the correct speed as well. Just focus on my finger without moving your head, please. And again. If you look at Hannah's eyes, when she's moving down, her eyelids are following her eyes with the movement. From this point, we can go back to the neck, checking the carotid pulse. 
Here you can comment on the character and the volume. We're checking the trachea, make sure it's central. And then we're percussing for a retrosternal thyroid gland. Finally, remember to auscultate the patient's carotid and thyroid gland using the bell as we're looking for breweries. So bell, breweries, B and B. If the patient's breathing is laboured, it's a good point to ask the patient just to hold their breath for a few seconds to examine for the breweries and for the thyroid as well. We then go on to check for pretibial myxedema, which there does not appear to be any. It's important to complete the thyroid examination by testing the ankle reflexes. You'd position the patient on a chair with their feet and ankles exposed. Using a tendon hammer, you strike across the Achilles tendon and check for the ankle reflex. If there's a normal reflex with a normal range, that's fine. However, if there's hyperreflexia or rapid reflex, this is a sign of hyper thyroidism. If the patient has diminished reflexes or no ankle reflexes, this is a sign of hypothyroidism. Mm -hmm.